everyone welcome to books and talks i'm varsha khangwal today i'm going to talk about this extremely special book the number one ladies detective agency written by alexander mccall smith now this book was published in great britain in 1998 there is a reason to talk about this book today in 2021 the first and foremost reason being that it's an extremely beautiful book it's written in very easy very simple english but it has the most astounding most beautiful thoughts that could ever be there in a single book it talks about old botswana morality of course the seat of events in this book is botswana in africa but whatever this author says about morality the goodness the human values it holds true for everywhere else in the world especially so in india when the author talks about botswana africa the kalahari desert you know every everything tugs at your heart and you instantly transported back to your own native village or your hometown that happened to me very often while he talked of africa in the most glowing terms i was reminded of my own native place so going ahead with the story precious remotes way is the first woman detective private detective in botswana and she is extremely proud of this fact she is the daughter of obedro mats ramotswe obedro mats is a miner used to be a miner who died after contracting a disease from working in the mines she later in the book is going to be engaged to mr jlb matekoni who is the proprietor of a workshop called clockwang road speedy motors he has employed two apprentices who are apparently a pain in his neck extremely careless careless young men who talk nothing but girls so uh, and there is another secretary that uh, mama ramotswe has employed her name is mama makutsi she the thing that often comes across about this secretary of mama ramotswe is that and the secretary has scored 97% in the secretarial college botswana secretarial college and again she is too proud of the fact that nobody but she could score 97% that was that still is an unbeaten record according to this book um this book is not only about detective work it's much more than that it's not a very regular detective story it is life in itself it is so beautiful so beautiful every every aspect is so beautifully described i'll just run you through a, a few of the passages that uh, i find exceptional one of the passages is about uh, sunset and mind you sunsets are so gloriously described in this book that you would want to be in your veranda sipping tea in this case uh, the protagonist mama ramots way is fond of bush tea and every evening she sits in her veranda thinks about life sips bush tea and this is where she gets proposed to by mr jlb matekoni so here i read about the sunset dusk was approaching and the sky was streaked with gold this was a favorite time of the day when the birds went dipping and swooping through the air and the insects of the night started to shriek in this gentle light the cattle would be walking home and the fires outside the huts would be crackling and glowing for the evening's cooking now we've all heard about the kalahari desert but it is only in this book that i almost long to be there <laughs> funny isn't it because this is how uh, the author describes kalahari and africa that you almost want to be in africa now see and she thought she had his precious remotes way and she thought i'm just a tiny person in africa but there is a place for me 
and for everybody to sit down on this earth and touch it and call it their own. She waited for another thought to come, but none did. And so she crept back into the hut and the warmth of the blankets on her sleeping mat. Now, driving the tiny white van along those rolling miles, she thought that one day she might go back into the Kalahari, into those empty spaces, those wide grasslands that broke and broke the heart. And it does break your heart a lot of times in this book. One of such moments is when Precious Ramotswe thinks about, she, she remembers her own um, infant child who dies just five days after his birth. Um, this happens when she unites a lost boy with, her, with his father. Mm, that's one of the cases she deals with. So when she unites this boy back with his father and both of them meet and of course it's a very emotional scene she walks back to her tiny white van Mama Ramotswe walked back towards her van not wanting to intrude upon the intimate moments of reunion she was crying for her own child too remembering the minute hand that had grasped her own so briefly while it tried to hold on to a strange world that was slipping away so quickly. There was so much suffering in Africa that it was tempting just to shrug your shoulders and walk away. But you can't do that, she thought. You just can't. And you just can't walk away anywhere in the world from your problems, can you? Obed Ramotswe, as I told you, was uh, Precious Ramotswe's father. It is often said in the book that he was uh, an expert on cattle. He was a very fine judge of cattle and men. Now, he said that people were like cattle. He here is Obed Ramotswe. He said that people were like their cattle. Thin, wretched cattle had thin, wretched owners. Listless cattle. Cattle which wandered aimlessly had owners whose lives lagged focus. And dishonest people, he maintained, had dishonest cattle. Cattle which would cheat other cattle of food or which would try to insinuate themselves into the herd of others. Finally, I'd read you the introduction that uh, Precious Ramonswe offers about herself. I am Precious Ramotswe, citizen of Botswana, daughter of Obed Ramotswe, who died because he had been a minor and could no longer breathe. His life was unrecorded. Who is there to write down the lives of ordinary people? Isn't it just superb? And it's true that there is no one to write about the lives of ordinary people, but this book does. And a lot many other books too, which I still have to read and which I surely will read. But for now, I'll leave you to read this book and tell me how you find it. Happy reading. Bye-bye.